You can always tell it's Monday now because just after 11 o'clock we talked to Peter Hitchens. So let's say hello. Peter, very good morning to you. Morning to you. So, uh, I guess we have to start with Mr Boris Johnson's speech last night. Uh, a lot of people seem confused by his message. What's your, what's your uh, state of play? Well, I, think, I think he was confused as well. I'm not sure he, he, he knew what to say or indeed he, he knows what he's doing. And it was simultaneously pathetic and outrageous, uh, like watching John Major declaring war on Monaco. Uh, it's just an absurdity. Uh, the, 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 the whole thing was an attempt to keep alive uh, the, the fear that he has engendered, while at the same time trying to reconstruct a society and an economy which have been completely crippled by that very same fear. He can't uh, work out what to do. This is why I keep saying that until it's understood that this has been a terrible mistake. We could face years of this and this interference that you mentioned at the beginning, where the government interferes in practically everything from the way you brush your teeth, the way you put your shoes on. Uh, this is why I, I've begun to call him Kim Jong Son, the dear leader, the man who, the man who's in charge of everything we do. Yeah, but he doesn't want to be that man. Every vote of our lives. But that's the point. He doesn't want to be that man. But it seems as though there's quite a large body of people in this country who now don't seem to know what to do unless somebody tells them. Well, how do you know he doesn't want to be that man? He had a choice over whether to be that man, and he took the advice of Imperial College, uh, particularly uh, the advice of Professor Neil Ferguson. Uh, who last week demonstrated in, in, <laughs> in, in, the, in the most detailed practical way that he didn't take the thing seriously because he ignored it and, uh, and allowed his, his mistress to come and uh, canoodle with him uh, against the very rules that had been created on the basis of his advice. So he doesn't take it seriously. Why should anybody else? But the prime minister still does. No opportunity was taken at that moment to say, well, actually, maybe it's time for a rethink. Uh, the cabinet appears to have been chosen uh, partly on the basis of an unintelligence test and partly on the basis of every single member of his scared stiff of, of, of Kim Jong-un and, and won't stand up to him. So we're not going to get anything from him uh, or from them. But I don't see that people should make excuses for, for, for the dear leader and say that he doesn't really want to do this. If he doesn't really want to do this, why doesn't he stop doing it? Well, that's what he's so, trying to do. He's trying to stop doing it. And that was what he trying. announced. Well, that's what he announced yesterday in, in that uh, he's going to set out more of it today. And so by the end of today, we will know more about the specifics of it. But his roadmap for lifting some of the lockdown restrictions are, is going to happen, not least because circumstances have changed. I mean, you must accept that circumstances now are different to what they were eight weeks ago. Well, yes, the country is immeasurably poorer and more disrupted. But yes. you, you and I, during this uh, long controversy, have both made mistakes. Uh, and it, on both occasions, what we did was we owned up and said, sorry, I was wrong about that. Uh, and, uh, and that's how you would address a mistake. What this government has done is it's made a mistake and it will not admit it. And, and, and because it won't admit it, then we're faced with this ludicrous thing. Here's the, one of the key areas of this is what's happening in the schools. The teachers are turning around and saying, you say this disease is incredibly dangerous and that people can die from it in large numbers, and therefore, how can you then tell us to go back into schools uh, where it will be spread? And the government can't turn around and say, you fools, that's not true, the disease isn't half as dangerous as you think it is. In fact, it's not really particularly dangerous at all, go back to work, because the government said it was dangerous mm. in the first place, so the government is, is tied in, into accepting this kind of nonsense by the very fact that it started the panic in the first place. Yes, no, I, I get that, and, and I don't disagree with you fundamentally on that. However, their, their response would be, actually, no, what we've said is, is that children um, are not really at risk, and that would appear to be largely the case. But I think well, it, also... It, it I was would, just, but why did they close the schools in the first place, then? Well, because I think the whole point of the shutdown in the first place was to stop people from moving around, and I know that you fundamentally disagree that that's in any way um, uh, helpful, but I well, think... Can it, I, can I I think in, can yeah, you something? You can. Because it's been it's very, very lightly covered in the British press. There was a glancing mention of it, pretty much buried in a story in, in the Sunday Telegraph yesterday. But the governor of New York State, Andrew Cuomo, commissioned a survey of, uh, of, a, of a very large number, 12, 12, 1,269 patients admitted to 113 hospitals in the state. In New York, yeah. Yeah. In um, the city, and actually. What, it and what it came back with was that... 66% uh, of those who had been admitted to a hospital uh, had been staying at home. Yes, but do you know where they were at home, though? 
Well, what do you mean, where, where were they? Well, I can tell you where they were at home because I looked into this particular story as well. And they have come largely from the Bronx and Brooklyn, from very high populated areas of public housing, very poor buildings, very poorly maintained. It's a sort of Grenfell Tower equivalent, if you like, of the well, way maybe the people so, live. but I don't Yeah, but that's that the point. So much. you can't, well, it does alter things because the, the number of people being admitted who have been staying at home in Manhattan is ridiculously low. Similarly in Staten Island, because the most of this particular um, number of people who were admitted having been at home, are also very very much from the minority ethnic area. They're, they're Hispanic and they're black. And so there are several reasons why that number is so high. Well, yes, the other thing is I think 96% of the... No, 73% of the admissions were people over the age of 51. Yes, and many of them had, um, you know, underlying health problems as well. well. Exactly. So, I, so, I, mean, I mean, it's I, a good I, point. As usual, probably more than 90% yes. had underlying health problems. The point, the point about this is that, the, that the, the determining issue is not whether they stayed at home. No, but the so determining issue is something else. Yes, and, the, the, and, I, and I, I've said this before, and I, I keep, have to keep saying this. If you if you look at the the excellent work done by Professor Carl Hennigan at the Centre for Evidence Based Medicine in Oxford, it's still saying, and it will continue to say, as far as I can see, that if you look at the deaths on the day they took place, the number of deaths from COVID nineteen in this country peaked on April the eighth, which was far too soon for the, for that for that peak and the subsequent decline in the bell curve. Uh, to have been caused in any way uh, by the panic measures instituted by the, by, by the Johnson government on the 24th of March. Yeah. They couldn't have Well, been. listen, so I was wait, speaking... Wait, the, 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 so we have these two pieces of evidence. Whatever it is that is, the, the, that is affecting the, 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 the spread and nature of the virus, it is not forcing people to stay at home. No, it may well not be, but... It, well, but there you I, are, but, then. But, we, have, but, we have a major breakthrough in that case. Well, if, we can, if we can understand that, that the whole basis on which this policy was devised, is actually null, uh, then we can well, get somewhere. And then we how have about, the other, how the about other we find... I think we also discussed before about how, the, the, how France, and I think now elsewhere, they have discovered uh, that the, the, the COVID-19 was, was actually present in Europe in December yeah. of 2019. It may well have been. And therefore, but, but, but it would have been spreading far, far earlier yes. than all these... That may well be true as well. But the point is, Peter, my argument has always been, and you've always failed to accept it, that the reason for doing the lockdown was to slow the rate of infection. And I know you say there's no evidence to suggest that it has slowed, but the fact that the overwhelming evidence that the NHS was able to cope was surely the reason that they did it, and that would appear to be the case. Now things have changed, so now we can look uh, more readily at, at what evidence we have. I spoke to a doctor in the last hour who's a GP who said to me that a month ago uh, he was seeing something like 50 um, patients with COVID a week, right? He says yeah. he hasn't seen any patients with COVID for the last two weeks, so clearly something has changed. Well, something has changed. Is that what, the, the, what could well be changing is that the standard bell curve of the disease is proceeding as it would have done anyway. Uh, this is, normally happens with infections. Yeah. They, they rise, they peak, they fall. And um, that you have to, what you do is you you assume in this or, or presume that the the government view uh, that government action is is the reason for the decline in infections, uh, without any evidence that, that is so. You, 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 of course, it is absolutely true that the vast numbers of infections and deaths predicted uh, by the Imperial College model didn't take place. But there's no I've seen no evidence at all. And I continue to see no evidence at all that this was caused by what the government did. No, I, I, we, listen, it, it, and, I, and I can see a lot. I can see a huge policy of, of uh, immense. Yes, but immensely you can hardly suggest policy in, in, in lives and health and money uh, on the basis of virtually no information at all, and on the basis of, of uh, again, I have to say that the modelling from Imperial College is coming under sustained attack now from experts. There's a very interesting posting by somebody under the, the slightly ludicrous pseudonym of. Sue Denim, uh, which um, yes. you probably work out means student, but it's well worth reading. Yes, okay. On the whole, but let me just ask of, you... the, of, of the of, of, of the imperial uh, the imperial model, and it just. Isn't very yes, well, good. listen, I, I, like you, I, I'm very suspicious of why they were even talking to Neil Ferguson, given his track record in all manner of different things. I don't think he's ever got anything right in his life. However, I'm sure he has. however, I don't want to be however, it, but it, well, so, well so I'm not interested in whether he has or not. Wrong. What I'd like to say is this. This country did not 
operate unilaterally. You know, I'd have more sympathy with your cause if you said to me, we did things which nobody else did. That's not true. We did the same, the same things that almost every other country in the world did, with very, very few exceptions, and we know that you have Sweden as an exception. But, uh, you know, almost every other country in the world did exactly what we did. And so at the time, when the rate of infection was rising like crazy, and people had seen bodies of the dead being put into lorries in, in Italy and, and driven away through the middle of the night like some kind of form of zombie movie, they didn't want to see that here. And so they had to take action, and the action they took, you're now saying, was over the top. But at the time, it seemed perfectly reasonable. Now, hang on a second. I, you've been a journalist for a long time. Yes. You know as well as I do that there is a sort of market in photographs and things like that. You also know that generally if things are going wrong uh, in government-run institutions... The government takes pretty severe steps to prevent them uh, from being publicised. So normally, uh, when the government, when the when the NHS has a major winter crisis, which happens quite a lot, uh, and a lot of people are dying from flu, which happens quite a lot, mm -hmm. uh, you don't get uh, teams of, uh, of of journalists and, and and camera crews invited into the intensive care wards. On the contrary, yeah. every effort is is, is made. Yeah, but if they, no, but if they, you don't get pictures. Uh, where, where photographers presumably are informed uh, that, that this is happening, because it's quite difficult to do these things by chance. You don't get pictures of lorry loads of coffins either. There aren't any, that's why. Well, there no, haven't been any. because there aren't any. Actually, I, there, there are, they, remember the, the famous pictures of the supposed mass graves being dug on that island in, 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 in New York. This was normal. This was an, an island which has been used for decades to, to, to bury... People whose relatives can't be found and can't afford to pay Yes, but what I'm saying is they weren't, they were, were not. This, I'm talking about the video footage that we saw yeah, from, from Italy, which was which was shot by news crews in Italy because it was going on. It but was do not. You know, do you know, know how those they, news crews it, happened to be there? It, Have you ever checked that? No, I've never checked no, that. But, but I, I know how stories so. come I, about, I Peter. Sure I, I know how I, stories I, come about. People, hang on a second. It just went bad news about about government institutions becomes readily available. Well, when you get told things, when you work for a newspaper, as you and I both have done, and you still do, when you worked in a newsroom rather than as a columnist, you would get people ringing you up and saying, by the way, over at Middlesex General, there's a terrible scandal going on at the moment because every night at midnight, they, they fill up about six articulated lorries with a load of dead people. And that would happen, and we would hear about it, and we would report on it. And I that's probably how it happened so. in Italy. I don't think so. But we, we, well, we no, I, well, I just think it's, a bit, it's been quite extraordinary how... Uh, how, how this, this thing has been propagandized. And I, I, I've said before that what the, the governments of these countries have, have done has been to distill fear into power. Uh, they've, they've spread and created fear. They've done everything they could, it seems to me, well, to, 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 to engender fear in the population. Well, let me ask and, you and a question. They've made power out of it, which they now can't control right. because the power is based on a fear which they've let loose and they can't calm down. Well, let me ask you a question. What did you do on Saturday? What did I do on Saturday? Yes. I have work to do on Saturday. So you didn't go out? Oh, I always go out. I, I take my. I, I, I would not take a day without exercise. Right, OK. Well, it was very busy in London. So busy, in fact, that even the police were putting out messages saying the numbers of people out in the, in the parks right now are so big that we are losing the battle. We can't fight the battle anymore. Now, that does not tell me that we are a nation of frightened people. That tells me we are a nation of people who, when the weather is nice, want to get out there and have picnics and drink beer and eat pizza and ride around on, on bicycles. It does not strike me that we are a nation living in fear. Well, I, again, I keep seeing instances of, 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 of behaviour when I am out, of pe people taking elaborate and absurd measures to avoid passing within distance of, sure. of moving people. Yeah, but on, so what? It's, they're still streets. out. Well, I, they're, they're, these contradict you. I don't know when you, you said lots of people were out, as you say, but were they were they out and breaking the social distancing rules? Yes. Uh, were they? Yes, they were all in parks. There were pictures. The Hackney police yeah, put them pictures. out. There were pictures of groups of people who were presumably from the same household. Well, not really. There sitting, was groups sitting, of people. The ones well, that I saw sitting well separated from each other. And I, whenever I see people in parks, that's what I see. The, 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 there may well be groups of people, but they've come, they've come from households and they're keeping... Well, they're, they're hardly the cowering in fear, though, are they? Well, they're eating they're pizza, doing, for God's sake. It, they're, doing it, they're doing it because they have been persuaded that, that they, they need to be afraid of, of, of doing what would come naturally, which is, which is not turning their backs on other people. Well, no, I don't agree. I think you can't have it both ways. You can't, on the one hand, say that we're all under house arrest and everybody's frightened to do anything and frightened to go out, when clearly many people are out. This morning, I was in a traffic jam in south-east London because so many people are driving around going back to work. 
we are not in lockdown anymore. It's as simple as that. Well, it's, some people some people are, are are breaking it, and some people aren't. A lot of people are continuing to uh, to, to, to to stay very much. So I have to say, this isn't a, if, not, this is not a terribly outdoorsy. Apart from a, a fairly small segment of the population of, of younger people, this isn't a terribly outdoorsy, exercise obsessed country. And, well, it does and seem to be now. People may may well make this as well. I tell even you what, less exercise than they did before. But what is it's certainly the case that uh, you, you're comparing it with the complete. Uh, complete desolation of six weeks ago, there are more people out, and there are, there are reasons for that, which we haven't time to go into, but you know know them as well as I do. But it's still, the, the level of traffic, the number of people in the streets, the way in which people behave towards each other is still wholly different from what you and I would have regarded as normal until now. Well, that's true, because we have been in an extraordinary period of, of history, and I think we can both agree at least on that. Now, you can say to me that, you know, the government shouldn't have done what they what they did, but in, my, in your view, you've still never really answered this question. What would you have done? Would you have done nothing? Would you have absolutely kept everybody going to work? All the pubs stayed open, despite the fact that France was shutting theirs, that Spain had shut all theirs, that Italy had shut theirs, that Germany, Denmark, almost every other country in Europe had shut theirs. You would have done nothing. Well, I've answered the question many times. I'll answer it again. I would have done what the Swedish government has done. Uh, it, it is, but out of caution, I mean, my natural instinct would be to say this is this is wholly overblown and it's not really a matter for government intervention. But because I, I, I'm aware that I might be I might be wrong about the seriousness of this thing, I think that the Swedish government's action was wise in that it took sensible precautions, uh, which have been, uh, in my view. Uh, highly effective and have kept the country alive. And I would have well, it hasn't. I, I, the, the, the answer to the question has remained the same from the start. Yes, but I'm the not, fact I'm is. I'm not saying before anybody suggests that I did this, what Sweden's done has been perfect. And they made they made the same mess with care homes that we did, mm. for instance. So they've also they've also not. now That's they've one of the also why their figures are higher than they otherwise would. Well, be. actually, the, the, the huge number, the great heaps of dead which were confidently expected in Sweden by the proponents of the of the imperial model, uh, were uh, have not taken place. But, the, but their, their, their sort of percentage of deaths is more or less the same as ours. They've only got a very small population. And also, at the weekend, you might, I don't know whether you saw there was a story in the FT quoting somebody called Christina Nyman, former deputy head of monetary policy at the Riksbank, who is now chief economist at uh, Handelsbanken, which is one of the big Swedish banks. She says, we think Sweden will pretty much end up more or less the same as every Everywhere else, and they're predicting now minimum 10% down on the economy. Well, I'm sure that the Swedish economy has been damaged, um, but it, it, I don't think it's been damaged anything like as much as ours. Well, we're predicting I, 14%. What, what, what Professor Giesiger was saying as well is that everybody will end up more or less uh, where they would have done whatever they did. Because exactly. The is, no, so, what's the even, difference? The point about this is that during the period uh, involved, Sweden has remained largely open as a society and hasn't done anything like as much damage to its economy as we have. And we have well, that's not true because this woman says it's going to end. We will be paying well, for decades. Well, this banking, they banking, anything like no, the banking woman says that they're going to end up the same. That's her prediction. Which so. She says they're going to end up the same economically, then she simply hasn't studied what's going on in this country. Well, she's a, a, a Swedish banker. I think she might know a bit more about the Swedish economy well, than you. She may know about Sweden, but I think if she, I, I, she can't, she, Sweden simply has not done this thing of paying people to do nothing uh, with fairy gold. Yeah, but this you call it fairy down. gold, and but the fact it, is, it, right... It the hasn't closed down its economy in no, the way that we have. No, no, but we have not closed down our economy. People are not without money. People are still able to spend the money that they have, whether it's supplied to them by the government or not, whether it is made by them continuing to be able to work. The econ You make out the economy has been destroyed. I maintain that it has not been destroyed. Well, I, I believe that it would be destroyed if we don't fix it, and we don't fix it soon. And as well, soon as we start coming out of lockdown, which I think is going to happen in the next few weeks then there is a chance that we, that we will be fine. No, I think already, I, I've said this during the whole period of the supposed austerity of the Cameron Osborne years, nine years of it, uh, the, the country saved 30 billion quid, which would otherwise have been spent, and this was deemed to be vitally important to the economy. We are currently spending 2.4 billion pounds a day, yeah. which means every 12 days we are using up all the money that was saved during nine years of austerity. How many years of austerity, how many lean years of high taxes, uh, unemployment, low wages, do you think it's going to take to recover from this immense expenditure? I don't think it will of, take of, any, of, any of time at all. By a government which, no. which is magically well, out of nothing and which was mocking. Six months ago, the people who were doing this now were mocking Jeremy Corbyn both for his, uh, his Maoist uh, proposals to interfere in the private lives of people uh, and for his magic money trees. 
And now they've got a magic money rainforest of their own, yeah. uh, enormous dimensions, and they themselves are interfering in, in huge yes, detail. Yes, but as, with, as you with, know, with our, Peter, with our lives. What, what, now, what was it? What is it that they, that they stand for? And, and didn't they believe what they were saying? Well, no, because times change. I mean, are you not capable of pivoting uh, your position when in, when everything changes? I mean, you can't possibly say to me that back in December when they were uh, electioneering uh, over Brexit and about most of the uh, the economic values of both parties that that would not change when we get hit by a worldwide pandemic. I mean, it would, be, it would be nonsensical no, for you not to change. change. If, you, if, you don't, if you believe that it, interfering in people's private lives and extending the power of government into, in, in, deeply into... My private life hasn't been interfered wrong. with. It's, it's always wrong. How has your private you, life you been interfered that, with? If you believe that economies are damaged by the invention and spending of non-existent money and the mortgaging of the future for decades to come, then you have to... We've been doing that, that for years. We have been borrowing money for years without ma anybody making much of a fuss about it. Quantitatively, no, 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 quanti no, 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 on this scale. doesn't matter. You said the principles are the same, right? It does matter. So, no, no, no. The, so the, now the, you're the, saying the, the principles, principles no, no, don't no, the matter. The principle is that the, 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 there is a quantitative difference between the levels of borrowing which we were engaged in before this began, and, and, and it's, a, also, it's so huge... But it is also a qualitative difference. Okay. Well, let me ask you another question. From one, it's a change from one attitude towards economics to a wholly different one. Would you? From a well, let me ask you. A and cautious one to, a, right. to an absolutely irresponsible and incautious one. Okay. Well, let me ask you a question uh, because we have to go shortly. And so know, you have to I give know, me a sorry. very short answer, I'm afraid. Sorry. <laughs> um, if you were told that it might rain, would you buy an umbrella or would you say, the hell with it? Well, of course, I'd, I'd buy an umbrella. Yeah. There you go. Well, so that's what? what we've... So we've got an umbrella. Yes. And so we don't get wet. Well, yes, but then if it doesn't rain... You've still uh, got you an umbrella. <laughs> the umbrella, will you? Yeah, but no, but you can use it next time. Umbrella, we're talking about. <laughs> this, thing, this thing costs more than a nuclear umbrella. Well, this thing is going to cost more than a Trident replacement, which, very was, which, possibly. Is, which was already mad. Yes. This is, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is in the scales of money which are, for which the word astronomical is inadequate. Mm. They, they are astonishing. Mm -hmm. No, I get that. Listen, it's been a pleasure as ever, Peter. Uh, we shall do it again next week. Um, we shall see what would have moved the dial by then. Peter Hitchens, columnist at the Mail on Sunday, uh, raconteur uh, of some repute.